The X-Men animated series is back with X-Men 97 and we're off to an amazing start. I didn't record my initial reactions, but I definitely lost it at the opening because of how closely it was to the original one, but essentially redid it for our time and it was just great to me. As for my opinion on the elements of it, I love the animation style, but I'm truly in love with the music. I think that since the style is meant to emulate the original animation, but with improvements that are meant to link up with what they're capable of today, it's just great, alright? That's cool and all. But I want to get straight into the thematic exploration of these episodes, beginning with episode one, titled, To Me, My X-Men, which is one of my favorite lines ever. Now, originally in the first episode of the original series, our protagonist for the episode was Jubilee, and living through her, we get the idea of what it means to live as a mutant at such a young age, alongside having a family of regular people. With Roberto's case... In episode one, the narrative goes straight into the more gritty and disturbing area of what it means to be a mutant. This landscape of discrimination and identity, and you're just seeing a piece of it. FOH, it's a known uh, acronym nowadays, but you know, you see the banner. And if you're unfamiliar to the X-Men franchise, it'll look like a regular anti-mutant group or just like the, the actual acronym, you know out of here the, the other word but it's extremely more than that these are the friends of humanity a good name for a disgusting group of people created by a son of a mutant their range originally had political reach and their word had connected to the many people that wish for the extermination of mutants now roberto doesn't move knowing or understanding that these are characters that want a singular thing that roberto can't offer them you know besides his life he says i'm one of the good ones in a desperate attempt to just disassociate from this vilified image of mutants he shows that he had internal conflicts by being mutant we even see that later on in the episode and it's a shared experience of many including a painful desire for acceptance and even more of a painful acknowledgement that his identity and the identity of being a mutant is exonerably linked to societal rejection there's a broader theme of this identity crisis where mutants truly just want to blend into society, thus the same society that rejects them. But they were always met with challenges, and a lot of cases, including this one, futility. Roberto is trying to offer money considering, you know, his position as a more wealthy member of society, but wealth can't scale past discrimination and hate, especially in times like this. And listen to what's being said. Their plan was to sell Roberto off for target practice. That isn't hyperbole in this world. They definitely had the intention of torturing him because extermination isn't enough to that type of person. It's it's not. It's never going to be enough. I'm seeing a lot of humans but no humanity. And on to the next point, uh, Cyclops is cool again. It's been years, but I'm loving the character of Cyclops and who he's supposed to be. You know, this dad-ish figure, even if it's in the merit of like, just, you know, cheesy jokes and all that. But after that, he's truly Cyclops. He understands that they all want to be at peace and have a good future. But as a mutant, they don't get those liberties as their lives are in a constant state of, of worry and scrutinization. If mutants aren't constantly making strides in their progress, their enemies are, and their progress is with the sole purpose of eliminating them all. He's very perceptive towards this grim reality, and all he can do feels like it isn't enough. Now, the next point we have Henry Gyrick. See, wow. This is why, even while the Friends of Humanity as a concept isn't explained for the new viewers, Henry does a terrifyingly good job at explaining the mentality of being an anti-mutant member of society. Just analyzing his speech alone, he's just scoffing at the idea of humanity just rolling over for mutants. Like, oh, you're going to get that over me? But he's already showing defensiveness. He's inherently defensive. His rhetoric being with the idea that 
mutants are a threat to the already human dominance. Just the sheer existence of mutants and rights of mutants are an existential threat to humans, is what his belief is. He's filled with zero-sum thinking. Mutants can't just prosper because he sees any gains with mutants as a loss for humanity. This perspective is fundamentally and disgustingly flawed because it views rights and freedoms as finite resources rather than universal that can be expanded to include all beings without detracting from anyone's quality of life. Discrimination towards mutants and racism has always had this type of backing behind it, this type of just ridiculous, it's not even logic. I wish everyone could genuinely see like how this is displayed like just see how easily it is and another thing had been his interpretation of sympathy and tolerance you know he has this cynicism about the capacity for human growth and understanding but one of the things that is truly scary about it due to the fact that it's there's truth in it the the the, the, the one thing is that to say that everyone that doesn't show visible disgust or hatred towards mutants probably likes them. The belief of that, that wouldn't be the best analysis of the situation. We have to be real about it. There are people that are willing to do whatever is needed to help their image. It's something that exists in our current world when we see companies say things like, oh, hey, we love everybody, you know, despite this thing that's happening. But then they do things like provide funding that directly oppresses a whole type of person. He believes that tolerance is extinction. And he's a sick guy that was willing to choose to not understand or look to the other side because he is human and he's locked on with his sights on who he truly is. This is who he is and he's standing by it. That's already a good antagonistic character because, you know, I, I just, I hate the guy. I mean, I've been hating him, but you get the idea. And as for the last point for episode one, I have, I love the fight scenes, the showcases of power, especially Cyclops, he's so extra. And the episode scoring entirely. I do a whole episode just going about, or do a whole video about just going about the music alone. I don't have the most technical knowledge when it comes to composing. But just as someone who's, you know, enjoying the music, I have a lot to gush about. Now on to episode two titled Mutant Liberation Begins. Now in this episode, Professor Xavier had left the school to Magneto with his will. But Magneto actually begins taking the steps to help continuing his dream like it's amazing though later he gives himself up to the government when they come to arrest him because he is he's being better about this he's like, if this is what's going to be taken to think of me better you know i'll do it he's forced to tra uh, stand trial by the un for his past crimes and stand trial he does magneto recounts his persecution that he's faced as a jewish person and then as a mutant the tragedy of being hunted and then the tragedy of being hunted by his own people he extends this bridge of you know this understanding that there are dangers of perpetuation cycles of violence and retribution understanding that there are times where the oppressed can become the oppressors perpetuating this cycle of harm he's had this internal conflict for so long and while he takes accountability for what he's done we can also acknowledge what humanity has done to warrant his actions but there's more to this man you know justice or accountability is still largely different from healing. He makes this point. We can bring perpetrators to justice, which is crucial, but it doesn't lead to healing the wounds left by their actions. Those actions aren't sufficient enough to repair this divided society. Healing involves deeper and more an empathetic process that addresses all of the psychological and emotional scars left on the victims. An environment like that where genuine reconciliation can begin would be amazing. They need more than this performative solidarity. We need genuine efforts to understand and address the root causes of this division and hurt. There's a lot to it. And there needs to be a clear line in the sand for the difference between self-defense and aggression because truly we have to see what this is. He says robots to hunt us, collars to chain our power humanity isn't defending itself you've seen what this has been truly used for the tr the tools themselves are more than preventative measures to 
have been taken by humanity to protect humanity. They're the arms that are taken up for when the world carries out its anti-mutant beliefs. All Professor X wanted was unity, and he was killed for it. What do you think Magneto is going to feel? What do you think the mutants are going to feel? In his second speech, oh my god, after Storm, oh, oh my gosh. If so, I say, as I have too many times before, never again. It's always one step forward and two steps back. But Magneto here, in this moment of rage and vulnerability, takes three steps forward. Storm has lost her powers to a bullet meant for Magneto. Because this is what happens. This is what happens when mutants actually go about making the world better and being better but the world never actually takes the precautions to help protect them what can they do to be good enough they struggle for societal acceptance despite cephalous acts of heroism and regardless of what they do they're viewed as like the others and judged by standards that are inherently biased and of a caliber that humanity itself doesn't even meet this line is all the same to any marginalized group fighting for recognition and rights in the face of these systemic prejudices. Because what's the fairness? They've taken the high ground. And this idealism of belief of a high road leads to a bottomless end where those who walk it are always led to suffering. It's a critique of pacifism or nonviolent resistance in the face of aggression and prejudice. It questions whether the sacrifices made for peace and coexistence are valued or even acknowledged by society at large, and whether such sacrifices lead to any meaningful change or just simply perpetuate a cycle of suffering for those that bear the brunt of oppression. Do you know what's the reward for mutant kind taking this high road? Death, powerlessness, for what? But even then, he doesn't act on this pain. He just hopes that they'll take the steps necessary because he has. Powerful stuff from Magneto. Trust me, amazing stuff from Magneto. And, you know, finally, oh, oh my gosh, finally. Storm, the closest thing we have to a modern god who had been connected to the lifeblood of the earth lost her power. She leaves a letter rather than saying goodbye in person because the X-Men had already lost so much in such a short amount of time uh, going on from like the original series to now. Uh, she also believed that at its basis, the X-Men had that personal connection of being a mutant as a group, you know. But now that she's lost it, she believes that, you know, she'd be affecting the dynamic. And I think while she does understand that they had that connection and it was specific to that, she doesn't really, she doesn't have to leave that's me, though. That's that's me saying that. She was a mutant, and her being there wouldn't, like, I don't know, like, dilute the friend group or some odd sort of thing like that. Like, it's... They were closely together, and that this, this unfortunate event shouldn't have separated, man, and it hurts. Her and Jean, like, sisters, and they understand how much it hurts to live as a mutant. And, oh, my God, like, I'm sickened, man. I understand when it comes to life, you are you in the time that you're living, yeah. And she's just taken the place of uh, just realizing, she's she realizes that she's someone else now. And that Ororo that had powers is, is someone in the past. Like, that's that's gone now. She's accepted this new reality so fast. And it wasn't that it was easy or something. It's just, she's just so involved in progress and continuing despite adversity. But she went on. Despite this happening, she just continued. She's like, I have to go on. Now she's going to navigate a similar world with this new life, and it hurts. But damn, I love this show. This is a really good show. I can't wait for the next episode. I mean, it takes a lot to get these thoughts together, but considering the next drop is going to be you know, a single episode, uh, it'll probably be easy to cover. I didn't even cover the fact that, yeah, Cyclops and Jean Grey, they're having a kid. I'm like, yeah, there's a lot to cover, but I want to, you know, this the, the main themes of the episode. I guess that's what I'm getting behind. And I do feel like we're going to get more about parenting and what it means to be a mutant, like from the beginning and all that and trying to navigate one as you have a child now and all that. But it's 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 a lot to I think I'll just wait for the next couple of episodes and I'll reference episodes one and two whenever needed. Uh, but yeah. Thank you all for watching. I don't know if you, I don't know who my JoJo fans are seeing this, but you know, this is, 
this is something that I do really love. The X-Men have always been a part of my life. And I'm happy to finally make this type of stuff. I want to say again. But yeah. I want to say maybe I cover comic stuff. But I don't know. This is like the best X-Men media we've had in, in a grip. But I, I'll, I'll definitely see whatever is needed or whatever is possible. You know, whatever is requested more so. I actually really like when people tell me, oh, do this and that. I was like, I'm like, hey, look, at least you care. <laughs> That's the idea. But yeah, thank you all for watching. Hopefully I'll see you on the next one. Until then, peace out and Godspeed.